Hey, welcome to the Votary Podcast. We're a team of filmmakers based in New England who are passionate about storytelling. We talk about the impact the stories have in every part of our lives, from business to culture and everything in between. Thanks for joining us. If anyone has a good actor impersonation right now, it's a good time to use it. Oh, these videos of people freaking out, seeing people say their names. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Right uh, is, that a, that. is that a good uh, De Niro? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it's so good. One oh! <laughs> one shot. <laughs> hey. You're my lucky charm. You know, we watched the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come sit with me. It's like the uh, that's like the one role I almost forget that that's. I in. just watched that the other. It's a good movie. Week. So what movie is good. It? Silver Linings Playbook. That's um, a good movie. Mm. I liked it. It, it it's, does. It's anxiety ridden. It does the oh, whole. It is. The whole it's uh, so good. dialogue though. Yeah. It's, like it's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. It does the whole like dirty dancing type of thing. Really well, like where, where it's like, oh, it's a love story, and they have to win the dance thing, and it's like, you know, normally on paper you'd read that and be like, that's not interesting at all, but they, they pull it off so well, and they tackle uh, mental health really well. What's the name of that, that director again? Hold on, you did David three, O. Russell? Yeah, Three Kings, David O. Russell. That's right. Oh wow, I Heart Huckabees. It's yeah, a great movie. I love that movie. That is good. Um, David O. Russell, the famous freak outer. Before everyone was found out to be freak outers on set, freak outer. Oh, he yeah. fr- he fruck out or something. He fruck out. <laughs> oh, okay. He made it popular on the, on the reg. He fruck out. He laid the roadmap for. Yeah, yeah he was the senior Christian freaker Bells outer and teacher. Tom Cruise's. <laughs> That's really cool. I like yeah. that guy. David O. Russell. All right, welcome this to podcast the podcast. Has been <laughs> <to> you, <right? laughs> David O. Russell. <clears throat> So, right, John, <laughs> could you get sued if you just randomly said sponsors that weren't real? Uh, that, let's try it. As okay. a marketing ploy? Honestly, let's try it. Um, let's let's think, try it? Yeah, you got nothing to lose. Hold on, hold on. All right, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this podcast. And just go to squarespace.com slash Votary Films. Sign up. To get 15% off your... No, no Votary Films. Just sign up. We don't actually have sponsorship. Anyways, just go there and Understood. you'll be... You'll be set for your website needs. That's a good one because Squarespace basically has a promotion on everyone's. Podcast. I feel like you no. Know, <laughs> I feel like I should know Skillshare. The that's the other script. one. Script. Like I feel like I've seen so many Squarespace at, uh, reads that I should be able to recite it back. Squarespace, they dominated that, huh? Mm-hmm. Hmm. They just hooked up with all content creators. Or um, Skillshare, I see those all the time. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Skillshare is a big one that I I usually see. Mm-hmm. All right, Mike. All right, let's take start. Us, let's start this. Away. Let's start this podcast. Well, the the subject of nostalgia was your idea, John, and I was curious what you, if you had anything in mind mm. right off the bat. I have some questions in mind, sure. but I, you know. well, okay. So when we were discussing the topic, I thought of nostalgia because um, it seems like something that you know uh, is commonly used as an endearing filmmaking tactic is bringing in older footage. And we were even talking about some marketing ads that we would make where we would show, you know, uh, 1950s footage of different advertising techniques and like, you know, the, the Marlboro, uh, ads and then going into like IBM and the newer, you know, the eighties and the information age and just like, Oh, that would be so cool. Like I instantly, I was like, Oh, I could see exactly what that would look like with, um, uh, older footage and you know using mediums that were old you know f- film vhs all these different things and i think w- you know as filmmakers um we often use those anyways to give style or emotion to different things so mm-hmm. i just thought you know maybe it'd be a cool discussion plus i recently bought a mechanical film camera yes started taking film photos which i've somehow avoided until now what did you get avoided. k1000 <laughs> Pentax K1000? Well, I asked Jamin for his, his advice because I know he has The one. only two options, Pentax or Canon. Okay, well, I, I flunked. No, <laughs> I, j- I got a Minolta. Minolta. Yep. Oh, snap. Mm-hmm. I would say Just if it's, it's J- Japanese-made, it's probably yeah. amazing. Yeah, I got a Minolta SRT 
102 after a couple hours of research. So that one has some automatic features like auto advance. The only automatic thing in the whole it's got a watch battery on the bottom and it's for the light meter. Oh, Everything's so it mechanical. is in that same Okay, I remembered it wrong. I'm rem- I'm probably remembering a Canon one that has auto advance, but the rest is manual. Yeah, the, everything's manual on it and it's yeah, it's been really cool, but uh I guess I could tell you the story behind why I bought it was because um you know, I was looking at some old photos of me when I was a kid and they were beautiful. I was like, these photos are really nice. Like I, you know, I have a nine month old daughter. I'm like, I would also like to take really beautiful photos. So I kind of was thinking about that. I was like, yeah, I'll probably get one one day. Not really looking into prices or thinking about it. And it is obviously you got to buy the film, you got to develop it, you know? So I was thinking, oh, that would be nice to do. And then, uh, my dad got sick with COVID, um, about the end of January. And he ended up getting so severe and being in critical care that he passed away. And my mom gave me a birthday card on February 24th that um, had, I think it was $100 in it. And I was like, whoa, like, you know, I'm not going to take money from my mom in this time of need. But she said that my dad had already put aside this money for me before he got sick for my birthday. Wow. Um, And so I was just like, well, I don't know what I'll use it for. I'll just hold on to it. And then later that night, I was thinking, oh, yeah, they're like film cameras. My dad took photos of me when I was a kid. Um, you know, I would, this could be a perfect opportunity to buy one. Um, and this was actually before he had passed. He was still in the hospital. So I, I, I purchased one for $50 um, and then some film rolls uh, and got them in. And Jamin showed me, you know, how to load it and everything. And I looked up some YouTube tutorials on, on it. And, you know, obviously I know all, like, the settings and, you know, uh, the relationships between you know, uh, getting blurry shutter, like all the different yep. styles. Like I, I know how to operate the camera. It was just like, how do I, you know, properly <laughs> reel it up or whatever. Yeah. Like there's like a, a button to preview your depth of field, which is yeah. like kind of advanced. Like you press it and like all of a sudden you can see what the depth of field will look like. Does yours have a light, a light meter on it? Inside it's, and this took me a little while to figure out it's got a small needle yeah, that moves up and down, and there's a circle. And as I adjust my aperture, the circle has to match up with it. Yeah, and I don't know how accurate it is. I have to see once I get. Yeah, they're usually pretty good. Yeah. They're usually pretty good. Yeah, those are the original ones. You must want it in the yeah. So it was super. Center. Yeah, it was like once I understood a few things, like what the heck this button is, how to like wind the uh, film up correctly and not you know jam it and all this different stuff. Then uh, you know, you know, and I showed my wife Lanelle and she was loving it. And we went to the park and she was like, "This is so much fun taking photos." Like. Uh, on a, this mechanical camera so she loved it we were all t- having fun with it and my first photo actually i went to the hospital with it i took a photo of my dad in his uh critical care unit i was like you know Jeez. just felt like a, a meaningful wow. a meaningful moment to use it for that for the very first time wow. um so yeah that was my first picture with it i don't know i didn't know about the light meter at that time so it might be just a black photo but <laughs> so, so so yeah film photography is not really nostalgic for you but like it right is at it's the same it, time because it, it you're is seeing photos of when you were a kid and it is because of that yeah yeah it's not because I, I used to do it um when i first started taking photos it was on a R- canon rebel dslr yeah all dslr photos and yeah. video and so um the nostalgic part for me is actually looking back and i was going through my parents attic and there was boxes and bo- like tupperware bins boxes and boxes and boxes of um old photos with negatives in them. One entire thing was just filled up with the one hour photo slips all yeah. empty, just like cast into the, <laughs> like a whole tub just of empty one hour photo slips. Like wow. there was that many that he had taken, you know, he was very keen on like capturing the moments of myself and my siblings. I, you know, I, I'm a lot younger than my siblings, but you know, for them when they were growing up and then me, he actually got his camera stolen, which is a hilarious memory of us being in a mall and he left on the bench to go into the store to help my mom. And then he came back out and the whole bag was gone. Jeez. And from that moment was when digital cameras started taking off point and shoots. So he ended up buying a Canon uh, digital camera point and shoot with, you know, whatever, like a 128 megabyte card, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like he, he was all about it and he, t- he took it everywhere. So it, it, it was a hard transition from this really beautiful, medium to you know just digital photos with like yeah. flash and like all the stuff and, and it was then an awkward time in even the technology because the, the transition from film to digital 
was like a struggle. I feel like mm-hmm. when you look back at it, it's like the, it just doesn't compare, right? Like that's kind of yeah. what I'm getting at. Yeah, I, rem- I remember hearing about like, oh, people have, you know, their opinions on what's better, film or digital photos. And that was when I was a kid. Like I remember hearing that. And then now like that I'm a adult, I look back and I'm like, well, obviously film looks so beautiful. <laughs> like th- these colors and these, yeah, you know, the quality of the photo looks so good. Yeah, yeah the debate didn't hold much weight for a long time until suddenly it did. Yeah. You know, I feel yeah. like it just was in the last few years now, digital is at a place where it's like affordable enough and also high quality enough that you can, you can, you know, size up your photos and not lose quality mm-hmm. or actually mm-hmm. get a specific look that you want. But right. And the thing is that what I found myself doing was adding film green in Lightroom, trying to get yeah. film light. Like I love the quality of Instagram accounts that I was seeing that had film, uh, photography and I wanted to kind of emulate that and just a, a, a I guess style that I gravitated towards and I was like well I could just shoot it and develop it and scan it you know myself like mm. you know, I guess I mean, it's not a revelation most people probably do that already but um, most people don't do the development still yeah because it's a little bit of a pain and it's even more of a pain to do the projection onto prints but that's maybe the mo- mm-hmm. the thing that pays off the most is when you do a projection onto your own print and you see this beautiful mm. thing resolved onto your own print. That's really mm-hmm. cool. In, in Berlin, is, that's like her favorite part, she says. Oh, yeah. yeah my, the, my, print, my the print's awesome. Print, my high school printing. had a dark room, which was really cool. Too. I have super fond memories of developing and printing photos with my dad with the red light bulb yep. on yep. in our laundry room wow. with no lights all the way around, and he showed me every last little bit of it, and... They were product photos, but it didn't matter. It was mm-hmm. like the process of going through it with him. It yeah. was awesome. I, I remember skipping film photography in high school because we were very l- lucky to have a uh, department that was like creative. It was down in the basement of the high school. It was like graphic design, um, print, uh, screen printing for shirts, uh, film photography. Uh, so in the last couple years, I think junior, senior year, I took all of those as electives and uh, we were fortunate to have that, but I skipped the film photography. I was like, ah, oh, digital film. And I went right into the, cause I was like, <laughs> that's way better. Like, I'm not like about that old stuff. So like, that's why I never like actually like landed yep. on it. I just was like, well, I know how to compose leading lines and rule of thirds, like do all this different stuff. Um, but I, yeah, I just went right into the digital, which after my dad was done with his digital camera, he was just mind blown by the iPhone whatever five <laughs> or the <laughs> iphone 6s he was like mind blown he's like the most powerful camera we've ever had is in our pockets like <laughs> like he would always say that like <laughs> he was he was just so and he, I, we, I looked through all his photos um before making a slideshow from the his memorial service and there was like past it's probably since 2016 there was seventy two thousand um, photos wow all like just million grandkid photos million like like he was so about it yeah but they were all like like he would zoom in to like 500x and like you know blurry and like he would edit them with like borders and cursive font and like it was just one of those hilarious things where i didn't think of my dad as like an artistic photographer but then i looked back and saw his slide projector stuff i saw his film photography and i was like wow this guy like really had a good eye um Mm. and so i ended up pulling out all the best phone pictures he had making a slideshow called the world through sam's eyes mm. just let that play that's just awesome stuff of like mountains and you know Wait, you pulled the iphone photos yeah oh. just, just his phone photos and you know even those like were well composed you know a lot of them i joke but uh, you know a lot yeah. of them were good yeah um, it's so. probably you know something that he probably wanted to develop even more and clearly genetically passed on to you yeah he had in the in the past few years, he had asked me, you know, just a little bit, like, oh, what would it be to, like, get one of those cameras that you have? And I, I'm thinking, like, oh, I have, like, a GH5. It's, like, video. Like, I'm like, wow, he's not going to need that. You know, I don't know. Get, get like, a, a Canon T7i or whatever's out now, you know? And my mom had done a little bit of research. She wanted to buy him one because she always encouraged him to, like, try and sell his photos. Um, but, yeah, it just... Never ended up happen. Never ended up happening. So it felt kind of special to uh, get one myself. But it just had me thinking about like uh, the way things cycle and the way that we gravitate towards older. You know, it's like fashion does it too, right? Every forty years, whatever, everything perfectly that was in style 
when the people who were old enough to make the clothes make what they wore when <laughs> they were kids. Yep. <laughs> and it perfectly mm, like yep. goes like that, like all through mm-hmm. different medias and mediums. And um, I don't know. I just think like as we, you know, make films, we also gravitate towards having uh, styles that are reminiscent in the past or mm-hmm. using old archival stuff. Like yeah. it gives it a really cool, you know, and like old, like I've, I've seen you Jamin do that a few times with like the radio uh, audio effect. It makes it feel like an old mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Just adding that effect onto like a, a voiceover mm-hmm. can make it feel like, Oh, this is like a 1960s broadcast or something. And it yeah. just, I don't know. It just makes yeah. it way better. <laughs> well, there's, there's something about like the way audio recording and, just e- like film and film or photography there is something that it's like the analog was actually it, it, it brought something out that was special and was like digital maybe is at the level now and maybe all of those mediums that it can it can match it or even surpass it but there's still something like vinyl records for, you know it's yeah. just like mm-hmm. you know I, who knows if it's if it's placebo effect or whatever but there's some sort of texture that you that you want and it's like ah, like that's I, I would say that's like an example of like, you know, something that's nostalgic that is like really beautiful. Um, like for you, it seems like that's like a way for you to connect with your dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like it's something new for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it but it's so, yeah, it's like, it's funny you say that too, because uh, my, my dad, he's not, I wouldn't consider him like a, an artistic guy per se, but he's into like flooring and which is a very like, mathematical but also kind of artistic and he's the reason I got into film photography when I was younger and that's kind of how I started and the only reason I would consider myself having like a visual eye is like film Mm -hmm. photography and he has all the stuff for a a dark room and everything I think it's still probably in storage somewhere Mm -hmm. um and we've never used it but yeah it's like that was kind of a way for me to be like, oh, well, like I'm interested in like <laughs> art stuff, and he's like, oh, like photography, like we'll show you, that's you know, show you the ropes kind that, of thing. That, that's funny you had that conversation with him, right? I mean, just saying, like, yeah, you yeah. know, like I think for me, it, it, I looked back this past few weeks on home videos, VHS videos, and I saw like myself as a 16, 16 month old kid or a two year old kid, not even carrying the film camera around, and he didn't Whoa. even care. He was like videoing me doing it, and I would like drop it on the ground, like right on the concrete, and like. <laughs> you know, like I was just this clumsy, clumsy, clumsy kid <laughs> that like, uh, you know, grew up with his, um, his camcorder. I love that. So just play with that. It was yeah. on standby. I was just like zooming in on stuff like, whoa, like I could go a thousand times magnification. Like it was yeah. just me playing with it, but I don't think I ever directly had a conversation. Like it, it was almost like I had to reflect back like, oh, that's kind of why I like mm. media you know, my dad was mm. a tire uh, salesman and, and he owned a tire business, much like how your dad owns flooring, right? Does he own it? No, he, he, he had his own business it. when he was, yeah, when he was younger, but yeah. So m- much like that, he was like a working man and, you know, I never really thought of him as like, oh, he's a creative, like, my, you know, he's my hero. He's the one who inspired me. It wasn't like that. Yeah. So it was just funny that now in reflection, I'm like, okay, well, he, he's the one who kind of put the cameras in my hand. Yeah. And was fine with me doing whatever, you know, like yeah. he was kind of just, you know, encouraging me to, yeah, to kind of do what I wanted to do. Never pressure me into like taking over the tire company. And never, you know, it was just kind of like being there and letting me do whatever I wanted. I had completely similar reflection this week because, um, for my birthday, which is a, just a few days ago, my, my son Zion had gotten the idea to take the guitar that my dad gave me mm-hmm. for my uh, graduation and get it fixed. And it's a really nice Coca Bolo Martin acoustic guitar. Mm. Thank I got you it for fixed. Let, thank you for letting me play it. But yeah, it for sure. Sounds amazing. It's, <laughs> it, it really does. It sounds and plays really nice. One of the best guitars I've ever played or heard. And um, because it's old, it, it is old, <laughs> and it's. Uh, are you calling me old? No. Wow. Okay. No, no. My birthday. <laughs> my birthday goes. Well, it, it is a. It is a Martin. It and is and old. Like it, you were saying, Coco Bolo is not really a, a it's, popular wood anymore. It's not being made so much anymore, and Martin's really they know what they're doing. So it's, it's not the, like these electric guitars. You know, <laughs> you just plug them into the amp and <laughs> just make all this <laughs> these electric noise. guitars. <laughs> but he gave me this. He he. As a gift, he got it fixed, and I was reflecting on my dad giving me that guitar because he knew how much I was like loving 
the arts and music and and you know that that made me very nostalgic when he put that I hadn't played the guitar in a really long time because I mm. had stopped because the bridge was broken. And I was just thinking about it. And I'm like, my dad gave me this guitar. And the way that he got it, because it was worth a lot of money, he didn't have a lot of money at the time, but he had an audio precision. <laughs> this is just so his, him and his life is like he had this piece of gear that was worth thousands of dollars. He had already upgraded to the next one and was using it for his business. So he had this one that wasn't being used. He's like, I could just sell it for cash. But instead, he traded it for like six guitars from a guy that makes the pickups. Nice. <laughs> and, he, and, and, uh, and, and in particular, he gave each one of us that played guitar, mm -hmm. guitars, starting with me. So that just talking about nostalgia, mm -hmm. that was a big thing. And thinking about dads that put things in your hands that they know they can see. That you that you love it and that you're doing something yeah. with it. And I think that's like one something that we could, you know, that's that's a good fatherly thing to do. I've definitely noticed that with my kids. Plus, like, the, plus the trading. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's a dad thing. I yeah. mean, you do that all the time. <laughs> oh but yeah. But my dad traded a set of four tires for the dog that we had growing up. <laughs> 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 I really wanted a puppy my whole childhood, oh and when I was ten, gosh. he finally caved. Got me a you know a dog. He paid a couple hundred for it, or whatever. And the rest of it, he traded them four tires, mm -hmm. and then they moved away, and they never cashed it in. Oh wow! <laughs> so what? yeah, they we were like we're like oh you know let's go like have our dog visit the the rest of the puppies or whatever like a few months later, and um, I think one time we met up with them, and then they never came to the shop, and then they had moved. And we were like, <laughs> oh okay, not gonna take we, the tires because we made up made out with that one. Awesome. Well, yeah, that's weird. They'd think they'd want the tires for the move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's something that makes you guys nostalgic? Besides Christmas. <sighs> Christmas is a weird one, man. This was this year was one of the only years I actually felt like, oh, I'm, I'm like feeling the Christmas spirit probably for the first time since I was a kid. Mm. Uh, Why is that? I don't know. Like, I think there's something about, I think nostalgia in itself can be extremely De depressing mm -hmm. to me like just really like well, well you can be consumed by it right it's nice to have it and yeah to think on it, it but when you when you fixate on it yeah I, I even feel worn out from all the stuff I, I looked through for my dad i'm like exhausted by it <laughs> yeah because in a way it's just reflecting on what's lost like what's it, gone it can be yeah mm. and it can also be like so sort of exploited in and then you just kind of associate it with just like other things and I don't know, like or, just, or, just, remakes. or just being around people who are like, all they want to do is reminisce and there's yeah. certain, and you're just like, yeah. ah, you're like, I want to look forward. But anyway, I don't know. I don't know what's something that make me nostalgic. Like, I mean, we have, we have uh it's a wonderful life. Like the, the massive uh, mural there that, that, that movie, you know, I think when I was really young, I just I was like, oh, this is like a cool movie we watch every year. And just having those sort of check marks like every year, you notice like this mm. thing stays the same, but you yeah. change so much. And then I remember, you know, being in my 20s and watching that movie and just being like horribly depressed. I was like, he never <laughs> gets out and does what he wants. Like I was, I was like, the whole point of the movie is supposed to be this like beautiful thing, and I like it suddenly just like became, and I, and I was like overthinking my childhood, <laughs> just being like, oh, like this, like why was I, it, you know? But when I was a teenager, I'd watch it and be like, ooh, this feels snuggly and warm and great, mm -hmm. and then I got over that <laughs> like feeling, and then watch it again this year, I was like, oh, actually, I was like brought to tears. It was like it, mm -hmm. I was like, uh, you know. There's something so beautiful about that. Like That's what happens to me every <laughs> single year. And I always see something new. We watch it every year and I always see something new where I'm like, I, I must know that movie inside and out, every yeah. single line. Well you I said that that's news. like your favorite movie. It is. It's my favorite film. And yeah. I and I you know, I even wrote about it in the book, like the fact that he didn't get out and the fact that he didn't take stock in the value of his choices all throughout that and didn't reflect on the, the good choices that he was making selflessly for people yeah. and then just suddenly saw his life through this lens of binary. I either got out of the town or I didn't. I d either achieved my dreams or I didn't. And he was just like stuck in the I didn't. That's good. And I'm like, wow, he didn't. He, that really kind of like speaks to the value of reflection both f for, you know, sometimes we have to ref we do need to reflect and say, hey, what did we do wrong? Let's do it better. Mm -hmm. But we also need to reflect yeah. and say, hey, this, that was a good choice because it led to this mm -hmm. and reinforce that. 
<clears throat> that was a big kind of lesson that that movie. Brought. Well, I would imagine too for for you, it's like highly relatable at this point. Definitely not in this, not in the sense that like you never got out and did anything. Just in the sense of like you, the family, you, you got yeah, you have like all these kids. <laughs> Bethany <laughs> like, and I sometimes do lines from that movie like as a joke. We're like, you call this a happy family? <laughs> Why do we have to have all these kids? Why have all these kids? <laughs> My favorite, uh, Ben and I always quote that the part at the end where he, they comes in and he, it's almost like he's surprised because he like almost like forgot he has ch- kids and he just like runs in. He's like, Tommy, kids, kids. kids. just like the way he says it. Kids. He's so gentle. Yeah. Kids. kids. Well, I mean, he, okay. So th- that's funny you brought that up because even with the, uh, thank you videos for the clients, like I like to make you those. You used that. Yeah. yeah that I mean, I, li- I like, you know, to make that like feel <laughs> reflective because we're reflecting on 2020, all the the right. clients we had so it's kind of nice to bring in some like ref, you know nostalgic tones yeah. so i threw in a little bit of it's a wonderful life lines underneath that was a good one you did i liked that one <laughs> and the, and the, the year the, before it was all Elf. the other ones <laughs> you've done yeah the rest mm. was okay but that one was pretty good no, i mean that's I, a joke for all you audience out there uh, Every, <laughs> everything john o puts out is awesome <laughs> no i've seen everything it's um, a wonderful life. Um, is, is, we're gonna get like early copyright stuff, infringement early or something. We, we like use yeah. we use like clips from that. Thank well, you. It's a wonderful life for sponsoring this podcast. Thank well, you, guess, Jim Stewart. I guess there's some there's some bit of their story is about that, right? Is, is that I I don't know how true this is, but the rumor that I heard was that they whoever the studio was didn't renew <laughs> their rights on that. It accidentally lapsed. And went into the public domain Whoa. or something. I don't know how yeah. it all works, but hmm. I know what I heard was that TV stations were looking for content to play at Christmas back to back because people yeah, were watching I stuff. That. And that wasn't one that they had to pay for or could pay very little for or something. So it just went into and broadcast that's what made it year classic. after year and it made it a classic. I'm like, like it wasn't that's the pretty cool. Release. Right. No, no, it wasn't actually that much of a commercial success from what I hear. Yeah. Um, it's funny how like stuff now, like me as being a new parent, stuff now that is new to me is going to be her nostalgia. You know, right. she's going to look back on whatever you know TikTok. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was rag on TikTok. Oh my like, god! Like all, remember that? All TikTok? the th- yeah, right. I mean, you remember me, when like, people oh, did remember that? Vine? Like Vine was so good, but oh, I know Vine, Vine, rip Vine. Yeah, rip. Dude, um, Vine was so much fun. It, it was it, fun. There's the the limitation allowed you to like do something. How many seconds really was different. it? It was like nine seconds. Six, six, six seconds. Oh yeah. my gosh! Just the yeah, people were doing some really cool creative things. Do you do you need us to pause for a second? Pausing. Pause, 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 pause. I'm gonna pee. Pause. How do we all get full beers again? That's weird. Why do you think nostalgia is so like I don't know powerful? Whether it, whether it's being explo- exploited or not, emotions just pulls on emotions. Literally, all it's doing is taking emotions that exist already and just pulling them. Yeah, that's how <laughs> it, that's that's a really great way of saying it. I think yeah. it's exactly that. I think these emotions are sitting in a compartment. Mm-hmm. dormant and in this moment some trigger or stimulus pulls it out and then it's familiar and it's there and you remember it and you feel it and mm-hmm. you know good bad or indifferent um, and because it's memories too right like it's the nostalgia is inherently connected with something that's already um, there it's not new and so you're not having to go through the process of how do I feel about this? Yeah, it's, it's a value slice from your history where you're like, it has some some type of value. Are you telling me to be up on the mic? Doesn't get in on that mic. Just okay. a little more, yeah. Just but no, right I mean, I think I think it's the fact that you don't have to establish a new emotional connection right away. So like, you already feel some way about something. Yeah, because like you, you know, anyone who sees anything like uh, from the '80s, which. I was born in the nineties. So when I'm seeing this eighties thing, I don't have that emotional connection to it, mm-hmm. but like my cousins and brothers and stuff, like when they see like, Oh, 
this 80s action figure show, they're like, just they instantly go crazy and start like launching into it. And I'm like, I well, have, I don't have that I have connection. That. I have that. If I smell hairspray from the 80s, it reminds me of mm. being a t- young preteen. You watch hairspray. Chasing girls and <laughs> smelling that smell. Love how that. Creepy and, up. How creepy and weird does <laughs> that sound? It. But, it was but like literally, there was a girl that was chasing me on the playground in jelly shoes with hair out to here. Oh my and that's gosh. a memory from the 80s. And I'm like, well, how cool you is it to be that? chased by the... It's a how cool. feeling from when you're a child. <laughs> no, I know. You know? And well, actually, that, you said something earlier where you're like kind of, you know, nostalgia like attached to a negative feeling. But I, I don't know if I have many that are negative. For me, nostalgia usually equals like some type of positive thing. And I... It doesn't mean that it was really positive at that time, but I, I right. feel like our brains naturally tend to. Well, that's kind of what I'm getting, trying to get to at the bottom of is like, is nostalgia inherently like a a longing, mm. and is that a good thing, or is it just like something that it yeah, could I be? Like, I feel like it's always in the positive context. Like I feel like you have trauma, <laughs> mm. and then you have nostalgia. You know, you're like, oh, that memory was terrible. I'm blacking it out of my yeah, mind yeah. Well, <laughs> or, I, I or, guess, or you have yeah. this rose colored glasses of like oh it was like your brain well said. filters it into like a euphoria yeah, where it's well like said. I want to be back there even though it might not have been any better than where you are right now your brain puts the filter on it that it was way better you know mm-hmm. that can be so depressing though that's what I mean like when no, you go I know back, if, saying, if your reality is yeah. you when, can compare it yeah I had a great sure. childhood so like it just was awesome. <laughs> now like, your adulthood is just like, and not that like my present state is like crap, but it was like I, I, when I was a kid. I, I if I do get nostalgic, it's like oh yeah, great. And then you're like oh, like y- then you just kind of come back to reality, and you're like oh, like you know, it's more. It's not about the memory being like a bad memory or any of that. It's like it's that you don't want to wake from the dream. You look yeah. You looked you looked forward to so many things, and mm-hmm. then you were disappointed. Over oh, then and it over can almost over. help you, right? I mean, if you look back. And you've lost some of what made you have a spark in the past. You know, could that juxtapose to where you are now almost, you know, you know, motivate you? Could you use nostalgia to say like, you know, I wasn't, you know, this is in personal reflection. I used to care about all these things and do all these things. And now I don't. And it course corrects you back to like, what's important? Like, why am I doing this type of thing? You know, is that what what you're getting I think... not really. I'm not really getting at anything. I'm just, okay, saying, well, like, I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm just curious about, yeah, like I feel like most people have a kind of a, a good relationship with nostalgia as a concept because mm. their experiences with it is, are like, ooh, yeah, I like when I, I watch that movie that reminds me. I of, get what you're saying, you know, though, because it's, the, yeah. it's like you you feel positive. Like you, you're missing something that once was. You're saying, oh, that in my childhood was a place where I liked, like, even looking back on it, I liked what was going on. I liked... Well, I feel like that's almost why Stranger Things was so wildly successful. Like, yep. Yeah. Honestly, if if that that was set on my list, It's on my list of things where nostalgia... It, like, took advantage of nostalgia, but I Mm -hmm. think it it did it maybe in a a, a, a wise kind of way where they they created something new. It wasn't mm -hmm. just, like, Ghostbusters with, you know, women now, and it's the same thing. Oh, I know. I mean, it's, it's nostalgic, but it's also just kind of, it's like weirdly manipulative or like just taking advantage of <laughs> like something. Rotary people podcast canceled. Canceled. I'm not saying that <laughs> just redoing something Thanks, with women is automatically bad. I'm just saying like, just do something new. You know, if you want, if you mm-hmm. want to make, if you right. want to like get that nostalgic feeling, you know, like Stranger Things, it's like, it's very 80s. It's like playing yeah. on the, on all these kind of tropes that the 80s movies had and, and all these ideas, but they still, it's a new idea. And so mm-hmm. I feel like that does it fairly well. But, but it, if it was set in modern day, it could have easily flopped because it was so, it was so yeah, the well themes done. Feel so eighty with the themes, yeah. right? That those that lived through that time, instant hit. Like well, I know, and, I, I know and, people and. that I know that that would never be into horror or you know. You and know, it's not I just living it in the time either. It's recognizing things that you've watched and you like. You know, there's other movies that it's playing on, like Goonies and Stand By Me. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I, I can say, like, my kids watched it, like, kids live like that. They get to ride around. That's the other side and, of it. And, like, yeah. there's a longing for it. Exactly. <laughs> like what they That's were the other seeing side them that doing. Those that saw it, instant hit, or yeah. lived it, instant hit. Those that didn't, 
you know, their their eyes mm-hmm. are open to yeah. another time right. mm-hmm. yeah. in life. Right. But like what you were saying is like it can be a, motiv- a motivation tool or just a, something to sort of like ref- reflect, but not not like live in 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 this sort of like negative place mm-hmm. or, or or like oh like wish wishing for the good old days and, yeah. all, and and almost acting like your life's over when it's not you know like i have i've ha- had like experiences like that where you just hang out with people who or like they're like 35 and they're like they're like all they do oh, is just reflect back up in their 20s or something you're like dude you have so much life ahead of you or, or like, like the, the yeah. classic grandparent that like was in the war and that all everything is just they're stuck compared there. to the yeah. war it's like nothing's as good or as you know, yeah. hard as it used to be. <laughs> well, because when you're whatever. a kid, you have all these possibilities, and your imagination is so vibrant of like, of like, oh, like what the what life could be, and so you're like soaking in all these things and all these memories, mm-hmm. and it's so powerful, and you and you're feeling these emotions sometimes for the first time, and so then when you go back to that, you're like, oh, you're like, I've kind of learned to numb out some of that stuff as I get older, and now and then when you go back to that nostalgia, you're like, oh, that yeah, I still can have that mm-hmm. that that feeling. And it, and it, and you know, it can be kind of like a, like a sore spot or like something that, uh, it, or it could be like, a, a you know, being a, a motivation to get back to that imaginative place in your life. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like nostalgia almost makes things feel better. Um, like for example, Sound of Music is a movie that I watched a lot as a kid. Yeah. And when I watched it as a kid, I didn't really like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And yep. like I was like I don't same here. It's like musical. There's these weird a- dancing, and there's a story. And it's like I didn't. I don't like most musicals because it feels like this this weird non real uh, yeah. musicals yeah. are mixture. The worst. But <laughs> l- going back to it and looking back at it, I'm like, wow, that had such a special place in my childhood. And it's not that I chose it. Yeah, it's that. That was what was going on, and it that's better what I with watched. age. It's like a fine wine. It's yeah, like, it's not good until you grow. Looking back up. on it, I appreciate it and yeah. I love it, and it's yeah. and also I can view it from another angle, which is that is incredible filmmaking as well. Yeah, and yeah. storytelling, and and it's really powerful. So there's those aspects to appreciate that I couldn't have appreciated when I was a kid. Yeah, so I mean, it happens a lot when you look back on kid your kids' young photos because. You're like, oh, my God, look how cute they Oh, my gosh. Can you even <clears throat> believe blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. You, you guys wouldn't get it yet until <laughs> you're close. <laughs> I mean, we already no. are. <laughs> but, yeah, really. No, but she she cries year. when she sees the, the, the day we brought her home. Exactly. From the it doesn't even take my, long. Even my niece and nephew, though. That <laughs> I mean, was the, Harvey. The, like, I always took care of, like, kids when I was younger, and we had, like, foster kids, and I felt no love for them. <laughs> but, like, when my niece oh. it, my niece came, not in, like, a, not in, like, you know. <laughs> 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 But like, you know what I mean? And then you have, I, I even had like a niece. It's not even like my kid. And I, I remember yes. holding her and being like, I love this baby right. so much. Like wow. in this intense yeah. way. Right. It's different. Yeah. I, I can, I can understand like, mm-hmm. and the, you know, like if it was to flash back to me during the time when those photos were taken, I was just like overwhelmed and Bethany's overwhelmed and everything's terrible and, mm. and not everything's terrible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Everything right? is terrible. And now we have these amazing conversations with our kids and, you know, when they're not fighting with each other or whatever. <laughs> and so you can't, like, you know, each era is different and you have to, like, stop and compare yeah. and, and then say, okay, there's good and bad for both times. And it doesn't mean that feeling isn't just, like, there. Because a part of me wanted, especially in the past, like, when I was a teenager and stuff, like, coming into my own, I was like, I, I hate when adults are telling me. I remember <laughs> yeah, when yeah. you were like, oh, you grew up so fast. I yeah, can't believe how tall you are. I, I can't believe I, how old you are. Yeah. I'm like, when I no, grow up, I'm going to be same. like, I believe exactly how old you are. Like to my nieces or whatever. Like, wow, you're 20. I believe it. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to like resist that like feeling. Yeah. Of, it was just so annoying to me when people <laughs> would say it to me all the time because they're not there because when you're there all the time, you're growing gradually with someone. Yeah. Isn't when it you crazy see how I get older too? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, I, I said the opposite to my kids. I'm like, what, what are you eight? Shouldn't you be 16 by now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's Shouldn't hard to be moving out by now. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> avoid it, but like part of you wants to just like be realistic and like, you know, have that balance of like life is life and life moves on and we are, you know, growing and learning and now in the present is really important. But then also like, it's fun to think back and, and especially with, again, with, uh, you know, posting photos, making videos, like it's well, fun, it's fun to use old stuff. Like, something about it too, that it was, is so compelling to me 
and I'm, I still don't know how to put language to it perfectly, but when I, so my brother Isaac is really good at remembering details about events in our childhood and we're pretty close in age. So we went through almost everything together and he can remember very specific things that happened. And for me, I'm like, Oh wait, did that happen? And then I'll be like, wait, what happened then? And then he'll be like, yeah, this, this, and this. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of vaguely almost remember that. Mm -hmm. And it's just so much harder for me to connect to the details. And so there was a part of me that wanted that even in, in my journey in filmmaking, I wanted to discover a way to even look back on things. And even the, you know, like Google photos and, and iPhone photos, yeah. looking back at what you've captured over the past two or three years. Do you get that years? like um, this day three yeah. years ago? Yeah. Like it's like when we were in our old office and it's Harvey insane. was a puppy. Like yes. Harvey's a puppy on my lap like while I'm editing like at the old office. It's like, like yeah. what? That was what? three years ago? Yeah. Uh, cool. I feel like it's almost a, I never thought of it this way, but it's like a superpower because, you know, in decades past, no one else has had that where you can look at a, catalog of photos and videos of your life mm -hmm. and it's literally right there accessible to you people would do it with their journals journaling used to be yeah a very very common that's what thing. i was thinking about journal every single night yep. and yep. then every once in a while you read pages from other years and it'll bring you and back you're just like i didn't even remember i was going through that well that yeah. happened with me with one year i mean maybe my memory is just horrible but you know i started putting even just small journal entries with like Photos of that day, yeah. Like, oh, this is what I have for birthday. Like you know, physically, whatever. or uh, no, on on like a notes app. Okay, just like a, wow. a daily note or whatever. And I look back a year, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's where I was mentally and thinking about, and that's, that's what so I was dope. feeling. And it's yeah. like, how do I forget that easy? You know? Yeah. Well, I think you know, not to geek out about story, but that's part of that's part of what's happening. Like you have you you have to know where you've been to know where you are and where you're going. Mm. It's all part of that story. And so we forget where we've been and then yeah. that suddenly reminds you. Yeah. And it gives you clarity for where you're at and saying, okay, what is my tomorrow thing mm -hmm. that I'm living right now and what can I do right now? Absolutely. And I like, like when that. you talk mm -hmm. about finding the right time to tell that story. Mm -hmm. So I might have a story, you know, like I just told a story about my dad a week, a month ago, whatever, I would probably wasn't ready to share that story because it, even right. just the thing about the film camera, it wasn't ready to like relate or for anyone to really understand or like I hadn't processed it. But like as we go along our lives, mm -hmm. some of them are year long, you know, years and years and years of gathering. And now I've reflected and now I re look back and right. now I have a, a, a new uh, revelation about myself. Right. Based on this information I've been gathering and yeah. I can share that, you know, and I think looking back, helps you analyze where you are now. So like mm -hmm. in your book, I think you talk about that, about, uh, you know, the telling of your story versus the writing of your story. So you're in this phase maybe where you're writing it and you're experiencing things and they're happening to you, right? Right. And you correct me if I'm wrong, but these things build up and then what do you do with them once, you know, they've passed and now you can, you know, almost use them as am ammunition to, fuel either inspire people or warn people or do whatever you want like from your story whatever right. the moral is you can start telling that yeah that's exactly it and and i think without reflecting or looking back on anything well you won't be authentic you won't know what the moral really was if without without looking back without reflect normal mm -hmm. reflection i think that's common i think people don't tell their stories or they tell them inaccurately yeah <laughs> i mean i hate to say it but it's, <laughs> right. it's really true like you can you can like you can convince yourself of something if you're not authentic with the yeah. way that you well, reflect. That, that's why it's good to document because right. our memories are not reliable. Right. Like we can, th we can experience something and then tell yeah. the story over and over. And, and even if you embellish slightly, you make something more interesting or dramatic. Next thing you know, you know, someone, you talk to someone years later who was there and they're like, that didn't that's happen. That's not that how way. it went. You're like, and you're like, your memory is just, is is created this whole world that didn't exist it's yeah weird. An another cool thing is when you have different people like you talked about your niece so like my nieces have different perspectives of the same exact event that i was at <laughs> it's like we went to disneyland they remember me being a certain way and like you know their grandparents being a certain way i remember other things you know i was focused on other things so when we all get together and tell the same story 
when we were at Epcot on New Year's Eve, all at the same time, we get like ten different slices of the story. Yeah, because they remember this. They remember when I like whatever like did something really stupid that I forgot about, and we all tell the story together. You know, in the living room now we remember it differently, and we can now actually have a clearer picture. Of and none of them are necessarily changing or stretching the truth it's just that their perspective yeah. is a certain part of it it may not be the whole picture well and our memories are like sometimes attached to like how we're feeling in that moment so you you actually remember like the feeling, the feeling. Yeah, yeah. You do. it's not like and the feeling colors crystal the memory. clear pictures Absolutely. in our head it's yeah. not that the way feel, the feeling tends to fill in the gaps of the memory totally the memory exactly. really went like this because exactly. that would have equaled the feeling <laughs> yeah and i mean even in like dreams when you're trying to tell someone about a dream it's like you don't really remember maybe the visuals and specifics of how things went or like the timeline or just anything because it's so confusing spooky. but you just know the feeling yeah right yeah it's yeah. weird but yeah. i i guess w yeah i guess nostalgia is only really depressing if like you're not <laughs> if in, you're in, not in a, in a fueling, <laughs> fueling something in for in your in your future if it's just like like looking back and you know how often you see in like movies where people are like i just wanted to go back to the way it was like do I, does anyone say that so in real life cringy. like it happens all the time in movies and it's and, and that always just makes me feel like oh my gosh like what you, it's never gonna be that, and yeah. I think I mm -hmm. think letting go of that is like is hard. And but there's something exciting about things changing, especially when I don't know, like if it's a big life thing. Sometimes it could be really nerve wracking to not know what's next. Like if you go to the same place for the you work and you have the same family in the same place, and you do the, you come home at the same time every day, you just get used to that, right? But when something changes, you feel. I don't know, for me, I learned to like look at that as an exciting thing. Like mm. life is going to change. Life is going to be different. Like there's something very exciting. And it, growing up, I always heard like being an adult is going to be terrible. Enjoy your childhood, you know, but like <laughs> being an adult can be fun. You can do See, whatever I you want and go wherever I you want. I right. thought being an adult would be so much better. <laughs> like when I was a kid, I was like, I can't mm. wait to have like this freedom and explore it, you know, and, and, and yeah, it has sure, been sure. to a degree, but I think I, I had so much freedom and I had so much imagination. I mean, when it's I first like moved out, I would just get, I would, uh, Linnell tells a story about how I, when we first got married, I bought chocolate, Lucky Charms and poured chocolate milk in the bowl. Just the <laughs> stuff that your parents and would, would have that. not be like, <laughs> I was like, I can do this every day. <laughs> and then I gained like 80 pounds. <laughs> so it wasn't Did she good. do it every day? <laughs> not every day. I mean, again, I probably wouldn't even, I, honestly, you, I probably wouldn't even remember that. The way you, that the way you told the up. story is like you did it once and then 80 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was like, like the photo journal that for your mom. Mom, I'm eating chocolate milk and my cereal. <laughs> it's just like gross stuff all over the uh, journal. Like, dude, I, I never had any like treat. Like the, the treats for us was like Teddy peanut butter. That's and the way honey. I grew up. I didn't, you know. Well, I'm on the Teddy peanut butter now. <laughs> yeah, I'm I on wasn't that, growing up. I'm on no. that Teddy peanut butter diet. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> this stuff is beautiful. Yeah, my version of candy as a kid was like crystallized ginger and carob chips. Carob chips? Yeah. yeah if you didn't have chocolate, you had carob. <laughs> What's that? You never is had that a vegetable? <laughs> you, you're like really missing out, bro. You ain't lived with it. <laughs> you're really missing out. Carob. And honey, honey, everything, just uh, like what you said. The old days, carob. baking oh, with honey. The good old days. So the good old days. Take me back. <laughs> To the carob. Well, that's partly why watching that documentary I was talking about, my brother oh, Jordan. Oh no! Uh, it was Here so it so nostalgic. <laughs> his footage of his life in the eighties and nineties was so nostalgic to me because they're all homeschoolers, and I felt like I was watching my childhood oh, in this man. thing. That's insane. His way of putting it in the film was, "We were very homeschooled." Like, that's how I feel like I was. I was very homeschooled. I feel like I was like not really homeschooled because I, I had so many friends on the same street that I hung out with. Every well, that was the same here, I, but that's I what know. he. They, I went to watch like a the movie. That's what he went to. I, don't want that's I mean, normal. I felt like I was not normal for homeschoolers. Such Homeschool, an all homeschoolers like um, social skills came from hanging out with other kids on their street. I mean, I felt like I wasn't very homeschooled because I went to like a public school, a school and had a teacher yeah. and like I was, was just, oh, I was just waiting for that joke. Bullied other ch kids and got bullied and went to the principal's office and had detention and yeah. you know, masked emotions. <laughs> well, I I was homeschooled because I skipped. I was skipping detention. I don't know. I don't remember if I if I did this more than once, but I was skipping detentions if I got them, and I was getting in trouble. And I mean, I had ADD. 
Like I, I did, and my mom was like, I don't want to put him on medication. And the school was like pressuring her, like put this kid on meds because he's a nut. <laughs> like the class, and I ha- had, the, you know, the label of the class clown and I just thought it was funny. And, but it, you know, I didn't realize this until years later that like behind the scenes, the school was just like, Dude, this kid is like causing problems. <laughs> like, and my mom's like, oh, well, I, I homeschooled my other kids, you know, I'll, I'll homeschool him. And. And she bought a, me a trampoline, and I would be like, I would be like in the chair, like not being able to focus and like jumping around. She's like, "Do you need to go jump on the trampoline?" <laughs> 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 and like, yeah, I still miss having trampoline breaks in the middle of the day. You need a trampoline. We need to get a trampoline, trampoline up trampoline. in here, <laughs> uh, maybe on the roof. Well, it's nostalgic for Mike, right? It's having a trampoline. Could we Let's hit get the ceiling the if we had a trampoline? Go to the nostalgia trampoline. <laughs> I think we could probably do it. <laughs> that really helped me, though, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> next week when lyrics here all week yeah the power of trampolines that's my next i'm book. really glad i wasn't that's Mike's i wasn't book. medicated but i also yeah. wish that they, they treated add like it was a real thing my mom was basically like ah, you just need a trampoline <laughs> <laughs> i'm like no well, I, is that all you needed i i don't think so it okay. did, but it helped me it helped me at that point in my life for yeah. sure like if you know being trapped in, <clears> in like a just a classroom all day i just, I just felt like mm-hmm <laughs> You should do something for a little bit, and then I can come back and focus. Maybe you should work on this ad that we're working on right now. Yeah? Yeah. What do you mean? Will it be nostalgic? It will be nostalgic for anyone who has lived through um, the Wright Brothers. Mm -hmm. I remember back (laughs) when the Model T. Yeah. My grandfather told me stories of taking Model T across country. Oh, you mean the... Oh, that's what ad. I yeah. thought you meant uh, the votary ad. I was no, no, no. I was it's like, a client ad for. Oh, so we're already schooling. leveraging the power of nostalgia. <laughs> we to are. get across a point. We have been about for education. A while. It's funny. That's what I kind of thought we were gonna talk about. Is like nostalgia being like the, all like the exploitive yeah, <laughs> side of I nostalgia, mean, but like. You guys are like we such, love it. Such positive. we loved it so much. It backfired. Like, I love nostalgia. <laughs> like, I'm over so here good. like, yeah, like I'm so happy aren't we're talking guys, about nostalgia. Aren't you guys sick of like the yeah, Lion but we King w- and Star Wars? We won you <laughs> over because you started uh, tearing up about a uh, trampoline. So uh, <laughs> yep. Like I would just. <laughs> <laughs> and I just felt like I was flying, bouncing, <laughs> bounce. Oh, Thank you, no. mom. Yeah. Do you yeah. ever break anything when you're on the trampoline? Like my uh, bones? bones? Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely, no. I've broken bro- bones off a of trampoline. Uh, uh, thank God I have never broken a bone. Same. I definitely smashed my head a bunch. A bone, but no, never broken a bone. They're it's so not big. Fun. They're so thick. They're so bony. <laughs> <break>. I tried. <laughs> you broke your wrist. I've broken a few things. I broke uh, my wrist. Your left one? Right. You wrote your right. Re- I did left arm. Yeah. Mm. It sounds cool and I give the story with zero context. <laughs> nah, that's it. That's I it. fell off a yeah, cliff. Yeah, I broke my wrist. <laughs> With the zero context. Mm-hmm. I love it. You should have died, to be honest. Yeah. It w- I fell off a cliff into a highway, so. You ever see that show? Double I whammy. I shouldn't yeah. be alive. What? <laughs> that show, I shouldn't be alive? No. Well, it's, it's great. stories of how people almost died and they shouldn't be alive. And me and my friends would always just say we shouldn't be alive <laughs> about the littlest things. Like <laughs> we, we even made like spoof, like we like fell over on our elbow or something. We'd be like, I shouldn't be alive right now. <laughs> like literally for years, we would just say that about everything. Were there ones that were just super mild where someone just like fell off a boat or something? <laughs> I don't know. They were usually like they had like a... They fell off a rooftop skateboarding and onto their head. Oh, so you're like neck. making fun of people. Yeah. Like, well, no, we were saying we're making fun of ourselves for being like I know, dramatic. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Should have died. Oh, this is bringing it back. I got sucked into a YouTube <laughs> video the other day that showed this pilot that was sucked out the front of an airline window when the airline window blew out. Yep. A pilot? Wait, Wait, this is real? This is real. I don't know how to visualize what you just said. You need to picture the front of well, we a just watched giant World War Z, 747. So yeah. Where the front window, the pilot's window breaks, <laughs> sucks out the pilot. Where's the camera? But I don't know he why has, this is funny. But he has a, a seatbelt on and gets caught, half sucked out, and the other pilots hold on to him. Holy crap. Trying to pull him all <laughs> oh back gosh. in. And I thought from the text of it that it was like, I shouldn't be alive. Yeah. It turned out he just died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say he did it on purpose. <laughs> That's Dude, not what funny. on purpose? Died on purpose? That's not. 
<laughs> Good. I don't know no. why. I, I'm sorry. I you lied. thought it would be like a heroic story. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like, oh, and the pilots pulled him back in and he lived through these. Did no, the other pilot get dead. pulled out too? No, they pulled him back that's, in. That's called they saved his body, and but he was dead. Was it a passenger plane? Yeah, it was a giant like 747. Commercial? Yeah. And so what? Did they were able to land it? <laughs> yes. The power of clickbait. But they pulled him in before the land, landing it. Like, they pulled the other guy in who died. Yes. And the co-pilot landed it. Wow. Cuz that's why uh, So any, he landed it any with any jet his over a certain size you have to have two pilots. All right. Let's right. land this it's like let's a let's missile. Let's, let's land, land this plane. podcast <laughs> before, before <laughs> we get land sucked it. out the window. <laughs> before our listeners I'm nostalgic get already. Out of you know what I'm nostalgic for? In that scene in Hook where that he's hit where he's playing with the baseball on the plane and then he he's like, like he's like you're afraid you're going to get Yeah, and he, sucked yeah, out. And he, yeah, and there's something about him playing with his eye in that scene I where know. he's just like you're you're afraid you're going to get sucked out. And Robin Williams is like I'm not afraid you're going to get sucked out. Yes, you are. You're afraid. You're gonna be sucked out. <laughs> it's so just the way he it says it. Out. You get it. You have it when he burned plays in your brain, with his right? eye that that you can't do the quote without playing with your. You're eye. afraid you're gonna be sucked out. <laughs> <laughs> so How that is that? that is just playing. See, that's in a the loop. power of nostalgia that's is that you only started it and I could finish it <laughs> with that. I know. That's how it is. Case in point. Yeah. There's it's certain, a good thing. There's certain clips from th- from things from like when I was a kid that just they're just always playing in my yeah. head and I don't know why. Rent free. <laughs> Rent free. Yeah. If I had a good memory, they would be. <laughs> how how about we I have to Google everything. I'm like, what was that one movie that was oh it or was ask so James good. brother. There was like actors oh, and there was like oh. it was like a story and there was Res like Cody like, just Which movie was that? And he's like Jurassic Park. Cody? Ah, you got it. It's like <laughs> da, na, 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 na. There's like a really tall, uh, some animal. It's like a huge neck. It's like a giraffe. I don't know. That was a that was a movie that <laughs> that's your Jurassic Park theme song. That's it. Right now. Is that right? <laughs> that's how good your memory is. <laughs> 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 that's the Jurassic Park theme song. Exactly. Whereas like Cody, almost. Cody comes into work and he's like, "I'm like, what are you saying over there?" He's like, "Oh, I was just reciting Goonies front to back, word for word, <laughs> the whole script." Cody's good with I know the memory stuff. So he's stupid. Really, he's good. He's you know. yeah. He's a little scary. He's less on the creative side and more. It's on more. The it's kind of psycho. More on the scary side. Yeah. 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 Scary. Uh, if I were to psycho- not as an- interesting as a psychoanalyze person. him, it would not, <laughs> it would not be a positive. Yeah. And he, with that note, <laughs> what do you? We, we love you, wait, Cody. Wait, wait, we only wait, say wait, that because Corey's not here. Yeah. yeah. He's in Florida this week. Wow. 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 He's I probably, remember Florida. Wow. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> back when I was a kid in Florida. Nostalgia. Wow. Take me back. All right, I got to go look at a house. Shouldn't be alive. All right, y'all, I'm getting nostalgic for this <laughs> podcast episode already. Well, people are going to hear you're it. They're going to be at this be point, sucked. they're going to be nostalgic about the start. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's how long it's been. Is there any parts of your story that you told earlier that would like be a beautiful wrap-up to this whole podcast? You just kind of brought it home. Hmm. Mm. Just so we could... Maybe some resolve for that, for that conflict that we got to. Mm. Story well, structure. Here, can I share about yeah. when we came over? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that part of that story that we got to hear already, my wife and I, Gracie, we went to Jono's house and he had just pulled out his VCR with his home videos mm-hmm. and the slide projector. Wait, is that what yep, it is? Yep. With all of his dad's photos. And he's like, do you guys want to look at some of the photos that my dad took? And we're like, yeah, that would be amazing. And he's like, it was from his trip to Alaska in like the 80s or something. Mm -hmm. And so he got the slide projector in his dining room and we turned off the lights and and put it on on the wall and flicked through on the slide projector. And one, I was just amazed by the quality of the film photos, like just insane. Yeah. It, 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 slides, there's nothing say, digital about yeah, it. I'm so positive. used to seeing pixels. Yeah. And there's no pixels. No, slides like, slides it was, it was, are the best. It was like infinitely like, sharp. Yes. I was like, yeah. how is it possible? And uh, we're looking at it on like the, the whatever board wall that I have. It's not even like a yeah. projection screen. Like it's like yeah. it's it's my wall. insane. And then, so you're hearing like the light kind of flickering and then he clicks through it. <laughs> yeah. And then the photos that your dad took were literally yeah. some of the most beautiful photos just like the texture and the colors is like it at um, dusk and the long Alaska days or short maybe is because it's winter so I guess short days but like that blue hour and then he has these photos of like um, 
the Northern Lights mm -hmm. and Ships shots from the, the plane. Oh yeah. Um, of the mountains with all of the, the snow, and it's just like stunning. Like uh, the photos that I would expect my favorite photographer or cinematographer to be posting on Instagram. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, I went on this amazing trip. No, it was like, that was your dad from the 80s. Yeah, and I think what I want to do is figure out a way to get those I was gonna say, printed somehow. Can we, like, put them right there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I <laughs> yeah, want to do, I think would be really honoring is to figure out, I mean, and that's just one trip. He went to, uh, I think, Hawaii and Taiwan and, like, about, or not Taiwan, um, I can't remember all the different countries. He, he and my mom traveled quite a bit f during that time. Um, you know, before I was born, of course. <laughs> not, uh, you know, not resentful about that. No. But um, I think what would be really cool is to make up some photo books, either a collection, Printed, a photo album, yeah. print them, whatever. I'm going to have to figure out how to get them. You know, there's some ways to scan uh, slides, but. If Dude, I sent them my somewhere friend to has, them a, has a fo has a scanner that has a slide uh, place for him, and I and I, oh, yeah? when I when I was like a total freelance like mm -hmm. chimney sweep, do, do, do whatever I want for like a little bit of money, like just random things. Like my friends like, oh, go through this guy, this photographer's like stuff. I had, mm -hmm. you know, we'll we'll pay you, and uh, they, the literally the quality from just this you know, this little slider that you put in, it's like a C span, whatever, uh, a scanner. And like, you can just blow it up like mm -hmm. massive and have these like beautiful, like slide digital versions of the slides. We should, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, if you can, on. I would love that. I, I mean, I downloaded an app, but it wanted me to pay for it. And I was like, I don't know. You're supposed to like shine a light behind it I and scan it with I the bet app. The scanner itself would probably not be that. Cause I thought it'd be really nice to have either a book of each, trip and whatever yeah, or print yeah. them or i also didn't show my family these so i thought it'd be really nice to um maybe make something for them that this year i could give them as like mm. a memory i did make a little video of my dad um like a three minute thing with a little voiceover i found um of him about his childhood which is very <laughs> pulling on nostalgia for sure um but it would be nice to like give these photos that i haven't shown anyone that i had never seen because i'd never knowing how to turn on the slide projector as a kid or whatever yeah. and well, show them. And I'm sure my mom's forgotten about them. Everyone's forgotten about these. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Votary's going to sponsor a scanner okay. for Jono's memories. We're going to buy it and, and we should it. hang them up Art here. Too, right? Yeah. I was going to say that. Can we these, hang some of those? I, yeah. I do these photo books for, for birthdays sometimes from artifact uprising. They're like pretty reasonable. It's all like recycled paper and they print on these like really textured, nice mm. paper. And it's like, yeah, th that would be probably a good, th if you're just doing like ones for your family, yeah. right? You're probably going to just do like six of them or something. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like well, that. and one for me. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. one for the office. And I yeah. want to say one other thing as we hang up. Your your dad, he had so much love for you. He, We even felt his love yeah. based on all the comments that he would give us. He was like Votary's number one fan totally. by being <laughs> your number one fan. Yes. Like. Yeah, was, we could feel he, he how was, proud he was. He at the top messages, of every, every single post. Every single post, he was just like Sam, so pumped. Like, saying such awesome and beautiful, amazing things. I almost want to like or get a collection of his comments. Cla 100 <laughs> clap emojis in a row <laughs> on stories. He was yeah. always clap emoji, clapping clap emoji, for our clap. posts. He was <laughs> but it's because he was like so proud of you, man. Yeah, he was. Like, yeah, so it's uh, it is special. That'll be just a whole page on it. It's just all the clap. Yes. <laughs> just like I mean, yeah. Them. How do you capture yeah, how he was on social media? <laughs> I gotta say, you know, you you have carried on that love that he has given to you because you you truly have love and show love for people in your life. And mm -hmm. I gotta say, you're doing his memory such an honor. Yeah. Um. By by carrying that on, and uh, you know, just want to say, you know, I. I that's really special. And, um, yeah. you know, I don't really have this place in your life to say it, but I can say as a father of my kids that I, he undoubtedly loves to see that yeah. you, you pass that on. Cause that's what I want to see in my boys. Mm -hmm. too, so. yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. And with that, we love you. Too. Be we right back. You. Gonna cry now. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna okay. Cry. Fam out. Peace out everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Till next time. Thank you.